Well, hello everyone. Hey guys. And welcome to another episode of Massey Art Studios. I'm Lee. I'm Jeremy. Now do not adjust your sets because this is actually in black and white. And the reason for it is it's a little bit of foreshadowing. This episode is going to be another grayscale, monochrome, monochromatic blob piece. And um, this was one that you, you and I talked about this composition yeah. a lot. And, and you definitely had a lot of ideas around where the blob should be placed on this piece. Yes. So thank you for your assistance. You're welcome. And I'll talk about that through the episode. I'll give you my pouring recipe. We'll talk about the colours and how I mix those custom colours up as well. And then some hints and tips throughout the episode too. If your name is down below, that means you are part of the Massey Posse which is a group of individuals that come to us on our Patreon account. Yeah. Thank you so very much for being here with us. We genuinely appreciate you. And um, I guess we hope to see as many of you here watching this episode at Porcon. I know. If you're going to be in Vegas with us from the 6th through to the 9th, taking his class or anyone else's, and you see us in the hallway, please stop and say hello, because we would please like to do. say hello to you and give you a big old hug. Right, show pony. Absolutely. All right, hugs, are, hugs are mandatory. Especially in Vegas. And there may be cocktails involved too. So, without much further ado, let's get to the dining room table. And I'm going to start blobbing. Let's do it. We are back, back, back again with another blob. Um, all right, so what can I tell you about this one first? So let's talk about the board. This is a wooden board from Jerry's Artorama. It's a Da Vinci birch wood board. And on this, as you can see, I've painted four shades in a kind of a, a square pattern. Um, very Melanie Farris-esque. I purchased one of her pieces of art not that long ago and absolutely love it. And that was kind of my vibe here. The middle square is 100% Liquitex Basics black. The next square is then 75% black and 25% white. The next square is 50% white, 50% black. And then the outside square is 75% white and 25% black. So that's how I got my gradient of the four colors on the base. And then those colors are exactly the same mixed into the bottles for this blob. Um, some quick close-ups there of me squeezing these blobs out. Now the blob recipe is my same. It's my tried and tested and works with all Liquitex Basics paints blob recipe. And that is 50% Mod Podge, 25% of your paint mixture, and then 25% Liquitex Gloss Varnish. Not Gloss Medium, but Gloss Varnish. Now, consistency is absolutely key in pretty much all fluid art techniques, but with the blob, it is even more so important because there's a very fine line between that blob consistency being too thin and then it's spreading or too thick and it'll leave in kind of mounds as it dries. So that recipe of 50, 25, 25 of Mod Podge, acrylic paint and gloss varnish will get you a consistency when you're using Liquitex paints that is perfect for blobbing. And then I decant that mixture into my squeeze bottles. I store them upside down and then I don't blob for at least 24 hours just to let some of the bubbles from the mix in hopefully rise to the top. As you can see as I'm squeezing these out, you will still always get bubbles because you're squeezing paint out of a tiny nozzle. What do you do when you get the bubbles? Well, I'll likely show you right now. Um, you can pop them with a torch. Um, you don't have to pop them with a skewer. Definitely don't be spraying any kind of alcohol on these because it's not a resin. Um, pop them with a torch. Keep the torch moving, otherwise you'll run the risk of scalding the paint. But um, pop those bubbles now, and as it sits and dries, pop them every 10 or 15 minutes if you can. Otherwise you'll get kind of bubbles that will just con continually appear in the top of your blobs over the course of the time that it sits. Um, that's it for now. Come back, I'll see you in a little second, and um, we'll talk some more hints and tips on how to squeeze out these blobs.
I was thinking about composition of this one, I was really trying to do something a little different. You know, I've painted tiny squares on a wood board before and blobbed on those. I've blobbed ombre style, four layers using all the four colours. I've done all sorts of things of, of, of these kind of um, ombre coloured blobs. Um, but what I really want to do was kind of play with perspective on this one because I loved that the middle black square was going to draw your eye into the centre. So I wanted to use the height of the blobs to kind of help accentuate that as well. So as you've seen, as I've blobbed on this board, I've done some really big blobs and then some smaller ones in the middle. And those big blobs will have three layers on them, as will some of the smaller ones, and then some of them will have two and some will have one. So what I'm doing is kind of drawing your eye to the center of this blob, um, just by using kind of a height um, of the blobs as I, as I go through this. Um, someone mentioned, actually a couple of people mentioned in the comments that as I put these up on social media, that you could actually put a mirror in the middle of these kind of style of blobs, which would be super cute as well. But I decided to leave that black square completely empty and it's resined as well, so it already looks like a mirror. It's so reflective, um, it looks really cool. Um, tips on, on blobbing. The bigger blobs you'll notice are I hope fairly consistent in size and that's because as I was blobbing I was counting. Um, I was counting one, two, three, four, five as I was blobbing so I knew what size I wanted that wouldn't spread outside of my border lines um, and then I also knew that if I counted that they would be very similar in size. So I really like actually the consistency of, of the size of the blobs on the corners of the, uh, of the edges, they look really great. Um, and then the blobs in the middle are just totally random. Um, I like to blob by keeping, and you'll see it right here, just the very, very, very tip of the nozzle in the blob because I feel that helps me get a better consistency. Um, so as I'm doing the bigger blobs, I'll keep the nozzle in the end of, in, in the end of it. Um, and then just squeeze gently, squeeze consistently. Um, don't worry about air bubbles because you will be able to pop them. Um, and kind of just go for it. Um, with this one, there was a little bit of random and a little bit of chaos and then a little bit of order, which I really enjoyed.
everyone always asks how long do these take to dry and most of the time it's people on TikTok and Facebook and Instagram who are making kind of you know schneid comments around you know how long it takes to dry um, but as you will see even though those outside kind of corner blobs are bigger than the bottom of a jam jar which is normally my guide this one actually dried just in 24 hours it's been particularly hot and humid here in texas it probably helped even though this was inside but you'll see right here the change within 24 hours now you'll notice that there was a color change why was that well the re the recipe consists of both gloss varnish and mod podge which in their liquid form are both murky milky colors but they dry clear so in the squeeze bottle and as you squeeze this one out they're going to look a little murkier and a little kind of grayer a bit more washed out than the color that they'll dry they will dry absolutely true to the color in the tube um, so don't be dismayed when you start to blob these colors out thinking that it looks like you know milky or gray or whatever as it dries it'll dry exactly as you expected it to and in this case just 24 hours later so I'm um, now doing my second layer of blobs um, going along I'm not going to blob on every single one of the first layers because I want to have that you know uh, distinguishing um, layering of one two three layers which you'll see as we go through this um, so I'm kind of being random now on which ones I choose to, to do the second layer on but um, sit back there's another blob let's get to this intentionally make any mistakes on this blob um, but people do also ask well what happens if you squeeze and too much comes out or if you make a mistake well if you've ever seen any of my previous blobs you'll know that it's absolutely okay um, it does happen and all you need to do is take a q-tip or a cotton bud as we call them in England and just gently wipe off the acrylic paint off the top of the blob so um, if I were to over blob I can just take a q-tip and just gently mop it up um, I like to moisten the q-tip because it seems to help a little bit but because that layer that you're blobbing on to is dry you don't mess it up um, and it's really easy to fix so don't be afraid of making mistakes when you blob um, it looks very precise kind of is but you really can fix mistakes if you make them my camera ran out of battery and I didn't notice because I was so intent on 
blobbing. Um, but you can see here, I'm just finishing off this second layer and ta-da! There it is, we've got one more layer to go. So again, just in 24 hours, we can do this final layer of blobbing. Um, I really, really loved this composition. It was actually something that Jeremy suggested doing and I kind of then tweaked it and played around with it, but it was it was really fun and I love how this one has dried. Please do stick around to the very end because I've got this one in a black frame and, um, and we'll show you this one completely dry as well. Um, the only other thing I wanted to say about, about these squeeze bottles and blobbing is that I do keep them and store them upside down. So these are stored with the nozzle pointing downwards and you might be thinking to yourself, well, how does that even happen? Well, um, the Fluid Art Co team actually constructed and now sell on their website a bottle holder which you actually then just sit the bottles in. I think you can get nine in it in total, and I use it every time I blob. Um, so you can cut the top, or you can cut the bottom off a plastic cup, turn it upside down, and that will work to hold your bottles in, which is what I used to do before Fluid Art Co came up with this wonderful contraption. Um, but the little upside down bottle holder is not expensive, and I will link it in the description box. So please go over to www.fluid-art.co and have a look because it really is a really wonderful thing to use because as you store the bottles upside down, that also means that any bubbles that are in your bottle also will rise to the very top, also helping in, uh, in not getting tons of bubbles in your blobs as you blob them out. to the very end of this third layer. As you can see, I'm doing fewer and fewer blobs in the kind of central sections of the of the squares and still doing that third layer. I contemplated going like fourth and fifth and doing more layers, but it just seemed to make sense as I kind of looked at it to keeping it to kind of the number three for some reason. Um, so you'll see me finish this one off very shortly, but again, stick around to the end and I'll show you this one with a beautiful black frame on it too. Thank you for watching guys. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already. You know I love these blobs. There definitely will be more to come. So there you have it. There you have it. There you have it. So quiet in the house without Tate. I know. You noticed. I know. He's at the groomers right now getting his summer cut, just like we've had. Yeah. The readiness for pork on. What did you did, what did you think of my little blob? I love this one. Yeah. I, I thought it was great. I'm really excited that you didn't blob in the middle. <gasps> Um, it looks kind of almost like a mirror that's in the center of it, and that's the illusion of it, and I love it. It did. Karen from Waterfall Acrylics and a couple of other people actually in our socials mentioned that you could make this kind of composition and, and put a mirror in the middle and yeah. have it as like a, a mirrored frame. I really enjoyed this one, as I always do with my blobs. You guys know I'm obsessed. I just want to kind of show you, if I may, the height that you get 
with these two if it's going to focus maybe not I do know during the course of the edit that I did have a little problem with the focusing on this one because it's there's just so much on it yeah and there's so much for it to kind of the camera to to focus on but this piece is actually going into a curated art show yeah um which is going to happen in august so you'll probably see some more pictures of this one because we'll take some pictures and show you guys in the in the youtube channels as well really love that one um anything else to say show pony it's wednesday it's hot it's hot, <laughs> hot. 107 today. Um, we are following the train of Julie E and an art by Julie, sorry, art by Julie E and Just Janice. Yes. Just Janice goes first, then art by Julie E. So please go check those gals out if you haven't already. They are amazing. Um, even though we're going to be in Vegas, we'll have an episode up for you on Sunday morning. Yeah. At our usual time of 11 o'clock central. Um, However, no, we won't be in classes. So yeah, we'll, we'll see you on that live as well. Lots of fun stuff coming up. And sure, there'll be tons of photographs of Porcon as well. So keep your eyes on all of the Facebook groups, yep. the Massey Art Studios, uh, community tab here on our channel as well. All right, guys, thank you for being here with us and we'll see you very soon. Bye guys. Travel, travel safe to Vegas if we're gonna see you there.